I'm sorry, my face is super red. I'm very allergic to my cat and I did not take my allergy meds today. So I'm just sneezing all over the place. If this is your first time, welcome. If this is your millionth time, welcome. And today we're going to be discussing, you guessed it, Arachnapocalypse. This is the anthology that was the most expensive for me to produce, but also took the most amount of time of any of the books that I've worked on, and there's a reason for that. Arachnapocalypse is an anthology, it is a collection of stories, short stories, that take place in the Arachnapocalypse universe, which was created by me, and I am so, so dang proud, proud of this book. Beautiful. It's gorgeous. This is my baby. I started writing Arachnapocalypse in 2020. I started building the universe for a short story that I was just gonna submit into an anthology and let it go and never touch it again because I do that with short stories. But as I started building out the universe, I started to really fall in love with the timeline and the concepts that I was creating, and I was like, there is no way I can just leave this at one story. There has to be more. There has to be more. So I reached out to some other authors who are friends of mine or acquaintances of mine. We kind of share similar circles and was like, please, <laughs> would you be interested in writing in my story, in writing in my universe? And uh, surprisingly, pleasant surprise, a few of them said yes. Uh, so we set to work sort of creating this book together. Obviously, a lot of the content in here I wrote myself. I also co-authored with a couple of authors, but there are other stories from authors that were written independently to fit into the universe and the timeline that I've built, and I am just so dang proud of this book. Arachnapocalypse, the anthology, is laid out in chronological order, so the events that happened at the beginning happened before the events that happened later on, and it's also sort of laid out in the concept of seasons. Winter, spring, uh, summer and fall help correlate the timeline. It's not that they're taking place in the same year, but they're taking place over the course of decades. And it's about humans. It's about humankind at the end of the world and what what sort of evolves out of that. It was inspired by The Walking Dead, Warhammer, Starship Troopers. It is extra and it is meant to be. And so, for those of you who do purchase and read this, I highly encourage you to take it as being extra on purpose. Um, it definitely has a few short stories that are thick with purple prose, and that is intentional. I've been talking about this book the whole time, I haven't given you guys the blurb, I haven't given you guys any snippets, so let's go with the blurb here. What has eight legs, violet blood, and too many bionic eyes to count? The arachnids wrought havoc on humankind, but first contact was only the beginning. Can humanity survive the end of the world? These nine tales paint a vivid and gory picture of life in the Arachnapocalypse. Okay, so let's, uh, let's, let's dig into this one. I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna read the foreword in a moment, but I want to talk about the authors first, because obviously I'm not the only author here. Um, so this is dedicated to my young self and to anyone with a story inside them, waiting to see the light of day, write what you love, damn the naysayers. All right, about the authors, C.W. Hawes. Um, Hawes is a multi-genre author and award-winning poet. He's the author of over 20 post-apocalyptic mystery, alternative history, and horror novels and stories. Maria Gabriela Oriana. Oriana is an Argentinian STEM major and freelance author. She loves Gothic fiction, historical fiction, poetry, medieval fantasy, and RPGs. Justin M. Sloan. Sloan is a video game writer, novelist, and screenwriter. He studied writing at John Hopkins University and screenwriting at the UCLA School of Theater, Film, and Television. He served in the U.S. Marines for five years. Merlin Spoke. Spoke is an award-winning flash fiction author, Warhammer enthusiast, and active duty service member. I also want to talk about the cover art really quick. The cover art was done by Mr. Gambino, and he does concept art for all kinds of different franchises. He's really awesome. You can look him up on ArtStation. I'll put a link in the description below. Instead of reading the blurbs, 
I'm just gonna read the short story titles to you guys since we're kind of like running out of time here. Uh, the first story is Violet Winter. It takes place at the very beginning, like as the arachnids are arriving. The second story is The First of Us. The third story is Ochre Spring. The fourth story is Galena. The fifth story is Icor Summer. The sixth story is Companion. The seventh story is Viridian Fall. The eighth story is Remainder of the Day. And the ninth story is Red Dust Child. All right, so if you end up reading this book, it is available for free on Amazon Kindle currently. What helps me the most is if you read it all the way to the end. So even if you end up like not wanting to finish the stories, not wanting to finish the book, if you can just swipe all the way to the end, that's super helpful in making sure that I get compensated for my work. And then also, for those of you who purchase it in whatever format, paper, digital, however you want to do it, leaving reviews is awesome. Like, you can rate it five stars, that's great, but if you can also add words into your rating, so actual, like, words in your review is super helpful in helping other people decide if they want to read this book.